Hi and welcome to my tutorial on introductory Intel x86 assembly language. I want to familiarize you with the big picture of assembly language, which is to see how computers think, even though they are inanimate objects. By the time you get experienced with assembly, you will gain a deeper appreciation for how programs work. You will also appreciate how programs make programs which in turn make more programs from the moment you turn on your computer to writing a program in debug.com, which is also a program. Assembly language is not as difficult as it seems because you are, in a way, ordering your computer to do whatever you want it to do in the purest form. So where do we begin? To make sense of the concepts covered in assembly language, I'll use a debugger because you can see the whole state of the machine frozen in time. Instead of allowing the processor to go full speed on running a program, we can take a deeper look into what the processor is doing at each instruction. So if I do a dir command here, I have a hello.com file, and what the hello.com file does is it prints hello world. So what we want to do is have an assembly listing of hello.com, like we want to see what makes hello.com hello.com like what makes hello.com able to print the hello.com the hello world youtube message and what makes it quit dos quit the program to dos so if we launch a debug program you launch you type in debug then the file name of the program you want to uh, look at its assembly listing of and all you get is this line right here but don't panic if you type in the question mark you get the table of commands right the table of commands and one of the most useful commands is the r command because that tells you the state of the machine at that time like where like which code does it want to execute but it was waiting for your request and like where is everything in memory basically so so when you press R you get like a bunch of letters and numbers and stuff like that but I'll, it'll, it will make sense to you basically what AXBX and so on and fo so forth like the first two lines the first two lines are just basically registers and what registers are is a special location or special locations are are special memories used by the processor for internal calculations or something like that like like say if you want to add something you would add through the register and then one register contains the result and so on and so forth you could write that register you could move whatever the data from that register to like your memory or something like that then then over here, um, you have your, you have the address of where the, where the CPU should execute instructions from. One of the most important instruction, one of the most important registers is the code segment register and the instruction pointer registers. Because think about it, where is the processor going to execute code if it cannot find like a particular location? And that's what CS and IP code segment and instruction pointer registers allow the CPU to do. It allows it to execute it in a really orderly fashion. So like it doesn't like execute code in like different spaces or or in the worst case execute code that is supposed to be data which is not really code. I'll show you what my what I mean. When I do um a dump command, that is that that command is like that, that command shows you the bytes in memory and its corresponding ASCII uh, display, right? If I do a dump command, all I get is the bytes and if we look on the right, we have the hello world YouTube message. Obviously, hello world YouTube is not code. It's it's not code, it's data. So you don't want your CPU, you don't want the CPU to um, mistakenly put the instruction pointer at 10C because if you do that it's like going to execute like garbage code which is supposed to be data in the first place so if so if I do an 
an assembly, an assemble command, which is simply you, and that that should give out give us the assembly listing of the program of the Hello World program. And we see here that our Hello World program is just made of some few actual instructions. Also, um, you may see that um, there is some uh, hexadecimal numbers here. And if you're not familiar with hexadecimal, I highly suggest that you brush up on it because most of all of what you see are in like hexadecimal. So over here, this is um the opcode, and that's what the processor sees when it's executing instructions. It doesn't see this; all it just sees is this. And if you like translate it into binary, that's what the machine is actually executing. So. Over here, you get your human readable equivalent of over here. So, when you press P, right, that the CPU would run that instruction, would like execute that instruction. Then it will like it will like stop and then wait for your request to in execute this new instruction. You could see here that um, that. DX changed from zero to zero one zero C, right, and our IP changed from 100 to 103 because we're executing later instructions. We're like we're finished with this instruction. We're gonna carry on with the next instruction. So that's how like the execution flow goes. It goes from top to bottom. It doesn't like go sideways unless if you have a jump instruction, which I will not talk about in this tutorial for now. Uh, so let's go back to our dump our our assemble actually not dump command our unassemble command and we have like a bunch of instructions right here that tell what the CPU to do and we have also some uh, s some instructions that we should not execute these starting from 10c we're not the CPU should not execute these instructions because it is data it's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be executed like if I do d 10 c for example, like dump the memory, dump the dump the like the contents of the memory starting at 10c, right? I should get data, and I do, and I get hello world YouTube, and that's clearly not um, an opcode that the processor is designed to read. It's not our, it's not our, it's not what the instructions that we provide for the processor. So, so over here, um. YouTube, right? You see, like this character here and this character here, and a dollar sign. Um, the the zero D zero A just means that um make a new line. Basically, it's just like a new line. And the dollar sign is like is a character supposed to let DOS know that when you're f when you're printing characters and when you hit that dollar sign character, stop. Like you could see, like there's a lot of videos on like how um. A program would like mistakenly print more characters, more characters, more characters than it's supposed to, and it prints like random gibberish. And what the function of this dollar sign here is is to like stop any more data from is to like just stop any more data from being printed. It's like gonna go. It's gonna like you could imagine print like opcodes and like print code that is supposed to be. It's gonna print like. It's gonna treat data like code. It's gonna treat code like data, but it's not supposed to print that code. I I don't know. Um, I don't know if I explained it right, but in the future videos, I hope to make sense of that. Anyways, um, we have our um unassemble instruction, and our current instruction pointer points to this instruction right here, and if we run that um. Our AH, our f first eight bytes of the AX register, the accumulator register, will have zero nine, and then we get to this in twenty one instruction. So we press P again and move age zero nine and twenty one. These pairs of instructions mean that you they mean that MS DOS should uh, print the characters. It should print the characters, and then we should see that. MS DOS does print Hello World. See, Hello World YouTube. We, you see that MS DOS does what it's supposed to do, 
And if we go from 100, that's where it was that's where our program was actually loaded at offset 100. We see that dx10 is 010c, right? And 010c, if we do a dump command of that, is our hello world YouTube da data message. Our hello world. The, that's the location. DX holds the location of our data in this case. So if we do R and, and let's see which instructions we should execute further, um, we have this um, 4C00 and and eventually that means if we're going to execute N21 with con in conjunction with this instruction, that means that uh, our program will terminate. So if we do a, another P instruct, another P command, and another P command, our program terminated normally. So that's about it for this tutorial. It's just like a basic um, overview of like how programs, uh, how programs work, and how programs execute. Like how ex the flow of execution goes from like top to bottom, and how the processor like reads these instructions as hexadecimal numbers and then translate them into binary or something like that.